Here's we like chapter 33. Uh, unlike our last chapter, this focuses on just one big topic, the topic of conditional sentences, but it's rather straightforward. So you are going to need to make a, a flashcard of the six different kinds of conditional sentences in Latin. So first we have factual uh, sentences, sentences that are in the indicative mood, no matter the tense. And so you have a present factual, so that in your uh, in the two parts of your sentence, the apodosis and the protosis. And so, so the protosis is the if part. It's the proposition, the protosis, and the apodosis is the is the result part, the uh, outcome or the result. So um, you you'll might hear those terms. So if it, in the both the if and the then, both the protesis and the apodosis, you're going to have the present indicative. So si Marcus Julium amat, ea eam amat. If Marcus loves Julia, then she loves him. Okay. Then you've also got a past factual. So you're going to have a past indicative tense in the protesis and a past indicative sense in the tense in the apodosis. So, see Marcus Ulium Amawit, Ea Eum Amawit. If Marcus loved Julia at that time, sometime in the past, then she loved him. And now we have the future more vivid, what this is called, where you have either the future or the future perfect indicative, plus, and then in the apodosis, the future uh, or the future perfect indicative. So, si Marcus Julium amaverit, ea am amabit. If Marcus loves Julia, if Marcus, you know, in, someday, in the future loves her, if, if Marcus loves Julia someday, uh, she will love him. So there are your conditional sentences that um, that have to do with facts on the ground so so it's kind of un, so these are, are are the straightforward ones they deal with reality as it is if what if we want to talk about things that are contrary to fact which are a lot of the different kinds of if then statements and so uh, from a fiddler on the roof uh, the song is if I were a rich man. I don't know if you've heard that song before, but if I were a rich man. That's a contrary to fact statement in English. That's actually the, the subjunctive mood in English. If I were a rich man. If I was a rich man, that's um, that's not contrary to fact. That's a, And again, this is a distinction that in English we don't follow so much anymore. But uh, that's why that song is, if I were a rich man. That's a contrary to fact conditional. He's not a rich man. When Tevia sings that, he's not a rich man. So he's singing about what he would do if he were rich, but he's not rich. Okay, so contrary to fact structures are in the subjunctive mood. Notice that in these examples, the second tense is the same as the first tense. You either get two present verbs, two imperfect verbs, or two pluperfect verbs, but always in the subjunctive when you're dealing with contrary to fact. So, this first one is called the future less vivid, or sometimes called the should would uh, conditional sentence. You have a present subjunctive plus a present subjunctive. Si Marcus Julium Amet, Ea Eum Amet. If Marcus should love Julia someday, then she would love him. But he doesn't love her. It's contrary to fact. Future less vivid. If Marcus should love Julia someday, she would perhaps someday love him. And then we have the present contrary to fact. Now this gets a little confusing because the present contrary to fact uses the imperfect subjunctive. Si Marcus Julium Amaret, Ea Eum Amaret. If Marcus loved Julia, but he doesn't, she would love him, but she doesn't. It's contrary to fact. So present contrary to fact uses the imperfect subjunctive. And then, uh, and then we have our sixth condition, past contrary to fact. That's going to use a pluperfect subjunctive. Si Marcus Ulam amawisit, ea am amawisit. 
if Marcus had loved Julia, she would have loved him. So those are your six different kinds of conditions. Of course, you can mix them. Um, sometimes you'll get this, uh, you can get a mixing of the tenses. Si me kitius invenices, liber nunc essem. If you had found me sooner, so that is an imperfect subjunctive. So that's like our past contrary to fact. If you had found me sooner, then I would now be free. It uses a present subjunctive to indicate that now I'm bringing this into the now. If you had done this in the past, I would now be free. So you can, you can mix the tenses, of course you can. But we want to learn the kind of pure tenses, both for the uh, factual conditions and the contrary to fact conditions. So you'll want to make a, a chart uh, very similar just to this chart here uh, or similar to the chart you're going to find on page 273 and 274 and you're going to want to study those uh, conditions because I might ask on a quiz simply what tenses are used in the present contrary to fact and you would need to be able to say in the protasis it's the imperfect subjunctive and in the apodosis it's the imperfect subjunctive and again those those terms you can find on page 273, but they are protasis and apodosis. Did I spell those right or is it all with O's? It's all with, uh, the second one is all with O's. So protasis and apodosis. So protasis is the if and apodosis is the then. Um, and then look over the vocabulary on page 275. Uh, very little vocabulary today. We're just kind of getting toward the end of the book and we'll be adding, we have fewer words to add. And then for your translations for this lesson, do numbers three and seven on page 276. And uh, obviously the, the normal schedule, work on these vocabulary and uh, learning these different conditions. Then move forward to the translations and watch the next video to get your corrections for those translations.